Also, there's a lot more that goes to a cinematic image from lighting to storytelling to any annoying thing that you want to comment down below because I already know people are going to. But for me, anytime I see an anamorphic image, a good one, I melt. I'm doing this video. I'm also going to be reviewing the Great Joy 50 millimeter. That's what I'm shooting this video on. I'm obsessed with this lens. The only downside is the stretch factor does change with the focus, but everything else for the price is one of the best. So one of my theories on photography and cinephotography is uh, when you have a colored frame, uh, our brains naturally gravitate to random parts within that frame. But when you have a black and white frame, our brains are forced to look at the whole image as a as a whole piece. And it kind of evokes a whole different set of emotions. Like it's a, it's a true, like you're truly looking at the whole frame. When you're looking to a spherical frame, we have this very creamy texture and it kind of gives you a flat image. And so, I don't know, I feel like it's like looking at a piece of paper, but when you're looking at an anamorphic image, you have all this texture in the image and your background and your subject is just naturally separated and all this character in there. And it kind of throws our brain for a loop and it kind of makes us pay attention more. It's like our brain gets lost in these waterfall layers and it just kind of captivates us and removes us from the real world. And that's personally what I always try to do, whether it's a stupid YouTube video or a documentary about passion project or a feature film that I possibly want to make at some point. I want to remove the viewer from their life for those couple of hours and get them lost into my own world that I'm trying to immerse them in. Let's talk about the three things about anamorphic that I love, the three characteristics. I'm going to start off with the main one, the most important one. Everything else can go out the door as long as I had this one thing, and that is the waterfall bokeh. I think one of the coolest things is you can stop down a T8 and you can still get this natural separation because you're not just counting the bokeh, but it's the fact that we're actually getting a stretched factor uh, out of that bokeh. And the whole reason I love it so much is because it gives you that painterly texture in the background. It makes it look like it's, it has this human touch to it to where it's not just this mechanical spherical look. It's like this, again, just this waterfall texture look. It's the only way you can really explain it. Now, I'd be a lying son of a bitch if I didn't admit to uh, loving lens flares. Uh, I really just... I don't know. To me, they're just so entertaining and fun. Obviously, this is a little bit overkill because it's locked off, but for me, it just comes down to production value, honestly. See, so when I'm doing YouTube videos, I'm catering to uh, our community, the filmmaking, photography community, but for most of my work and the projects I want to do, like my legacy projects, my target audience is normal people. Especially as I start doing these indigenous documentaries, I want people to actually watch and be entertained by the videos. And in order to do that, like we have to step up our production value and give people these like movie looking documentaries. And then even when it comes to solo projects and just like spec work and passion shoots and just fun fashion shoots, shoots I want that shit to look cinematic as F and one of the tricks to, to get that look is shooting anamorphic so so yeah anyways the, the flare is just kind of another cheat code for me that's what these lenses really do also just a few things about this lens before we wrap up this video it does have a 1.8 stretch factor but it does have that issue though is as you change focus distance the stretch factor changes with it so when you're at minimum focus distance I think it's around like a 1.6x uh, stretch but even at that point you're still getting a lot of uh, uh, stretch in the in the background so uh, it's actually not that bad, but it is annoying that in post you're constantly having to shift uh, the stretch factor and trying to just like do it by eye on what looks normal. It goes down to a T2.9. And again, when you're at that minimum focus, it's there's a lot of bokeh on there. So half the time I close down to F4. The cool thing with the FX6 is there's a digital image zoom, which basically is like upscaling and up resing it to a 1.5x crop. So basically I'm getting a 50 and a 75 millimeter within one shot. And the close focus on this is actually really damn good uh, on the lens it says 0.7 of a meter uh, so it's under a meter on close focus so once you use that digital image zoom you're getting a lot more punch out of it the build quality on it too is all metal um, i had it in a dusty rodeo dust hay just everything coming in my face and uh <laughs> sounded wrong <laughs> i don't see any dust in here which is the first uh with other budget anamorphics i've had uh dust just gets caked inside of it so i don't know how long it's going to hold up i've only used this on one shoot so far so we'll see you can still see there's 
bunch of dust all over my setup and this is after kind of cleaning it <laughs> for the budget range i think this is like one of the better performing uh anamorphic so uh if i i hope they're planning on making another one of these 1.8 x stretch because the 35 and the 85 millimeter has a constant squeeze factor so i don't know why they couldn't do that on this guy so um but i am loving this lens again just those natural flares um i do find it funny that a lot of people who uh, cry about blue flares don't realize that a lot of films like from the 70s and up for all these decades are being shot on vintage anamorphic lenses that we worship uh, actually have very strong blue flares i think the biggest difference is uh, they're either being shot on film or they're being professionally graded to where they're not pumping up the blue channel so much and this great joy 50 millimeter out of all the other budget lenses uh, the flares are the most natural in this obviously compared to more expensive anamorphics you get way more vintage looking bokeh where you get like secondary flares that are even softer and you're getting all like those soap bubbles those stretch bubbles and all that but again the great joy line of lenses pretty much are getting the most subtle like softest flares for the, the budget range so now once you start getting to the 5000 mark there's a lot of crazy good anamorphic lenses coming out but again this lens is competing even at a lower price so it's kind of like if you're on a budget uh this is gonna you know you know it's not that bad and just because i say that does not mean you got to go out and buy this damn thing right away i'm not saying to go buy anything all i'm doing is sharing my perspective and sharing uh, my viewpoints on it and it's your job to decide if you want it or not go watch other videos like my job's not to sell you on it my job's just to educate you and share my opinions on it mm -hmm.